This is One on One. Hi, Steve Adubato on location. Normally you see us in the studio, but we are in fact here in Vermont for a very special day. This is part of our Right from the Start NJ initiative, which looks at the challenges uh, facing our infants and toddlers and those who care for them. This is an event sponsored by the Terrell Fund. The Terrell Fund, um, a day for children, all about children. And the theme is the importance of love in early childhood. We're honored to be joined by a whole group of people here in Vermont. And first off, we're uh, talking to the Lieutenant Governor of the great state of Vermont, David Zuckerman. David, good to see you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. You're a farmer by background. It's true. Yeah, it still true. have a little grease on my hands. Yeah, no, no Jersey <laughs> tomato jokes, OK? No, no, you grow fine tomatoes. Ours are just a hair better. I knew that was coming. <laughs> uh, listen, by the way, you can hear the folks around us. There, uh, there's a break going on right now. Important conversations about early childhood education, about child care. Let me ask you, you, when you spoke to this group earlier, of uh, folks who are advocates, who are very involved and committed to child care, sure. your main message to them was, is? Well, I think a large part of it was advocacy to get the legislature to go farther, to uh, get more financial support to both the centers, uh, the home care facilities, and the workers so that we have less turnover and people can stay in that profession instead of getting squeezed out financially, and really encouraging folks to contact their legislators. Vermont's a small state. Tell so, folks, we have 8 million people in New Jersey, so give sure. people context. Well, Vermont's about 630, 640,000 people. So each legislator only represents about five to 10,000 people. If it's a two-seat district, it's 10,000. So encouraging folks to contact their legislators, even the ones that they think are good on the issues, and give them that boost of support when those legislators have to push a little farther, mm -hmm. particularly in a topic no one ever wants to talk about, which is raising revenue at the state level. So raising can, taxes. Raising taxes, so that we can actually fund this important investment in our kids. Because fundamentally, uh, as the folks in that other room know very well, that zero to five is when 90% of your development happens. Mm -hmm. And so if we invest in quality, affordable, and available childcare, we're investing in Vermont's future many, many times over. You know, the other thing is you may say, why Vermont? Vermont is actually recognized by many in the child care community as a model for the nation. What you did not get a chance to talk about up there, and I wanted to really ask you when I was, sure. I've been moderating this, this conversation today, what is the role in your view, Lieutenant Governor, of the federal government mm -hmm. when it comes to the question of promoting child care, providing federal dollars for quality child care, et cetera? Go ahead. Well, I think in this day and age, the role is beyond the federal dollars. It's also about leadership, about thinking beyond yourself. What does that mean? Um, what that so means- So excuse me for interrupting. My kids are good, I'm good, we've had great child care. Not my problem, you say. Right. Well, let's look at the Terrell Fund. Here's a gentleman who came up, uh, worked hard to make a good living, uh, even back in the 30s and 40s when the marginal tax rates on the wealthy were 60 and 70%. Not only did they pay their taxes to make society better, but then he dedicated, and his wife Margaret, huge sums of money to a fund to support children. Those children were not his children. Mm -hmm. Those were other people. And the thought of thinking beyond yourself, beyond thinking that uh, your success is solely due to your own action, certainly I believe in, in the idea that you can succeed and make yourself better than you would have been if you don't try mm -hmm. hard and you don't work hard. But at the same time, recognizing that everybody comes from very different circumstances and it's not fair to assume that someone that comes from a more challenged economic household or a split family household or various other early childhood challenges, adverse uh, aces, adverse childhood, aces, adverse adverse childhood, childhood experiences. experiences. By the way, while the Senate government's talking, sorry for interrupting, go on our website. You'll see it on the screen right now, steveautobato.org. Put in ACEs. We've done a whole series of interviews with folks about these adverse childhood experiences, that's right. including national experts on it. Well, People may not know the acronym, that's right. but it's real. It's very real. There's a lot of research and studies that show uh, that the challenges for folks to overcome some of those. Many do, but some don't. And the more we can nurture those kids from zero to five and think about others, the more we're actually helping ourselves as well. Both in tangible ways, those folks are more likely to be, quote, productive members of society, uh, good employees, uh, potentially entrepreneurs in the future, but also selfishly, if they don't end up going down a, a less 
uh, desirable track, uh, which might cost us Who in pays? incarceration or others. We pay. we pay. And so you can either do it from a selfish perspective or you can do it from a holistic perspective. And I think in our souls, we're actually holistic beings. Uh, and at the national level, because that was the, the, the nexus of your question, was what could be done at the national level? One, leaders could be talking more about our community and how we pay it forward to all of our community, how fortunate we are in this country as a whole, as the leading country of the world, as the wealthiest country in the world, that we ought to be um, uh, sharing that wealth to make our own society better as well as the world. But then fundamentally at the budget level, instead of cutting budgets for investment in childcare and in education and in our workers and our workforce, uh, we should be adding to that. It could be through universal health care, so that those low wage workers have health care and don't have to leave the profession because they don't have health care. And it could be investing in subsidizing their education so they can get trained more and help those small health care centers or even home health care uh, providers. Uh, more opportunities to learn how to really engage those children and give them more. There's a, there's a million ways, but it takes leadership. The theme today is all about love. Um, the importance of love in early childhood. A lot of this is about Fred Rogers. Yes. There's a documentary about Fred Rogers. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's incredible. Remember, Fred Rogers in 1968, PBS, groundbreaking children's programming, influenced so many of us helped formed who we have become. Helped me. Helped you, helped me. But here's the thing. This theme of love, which is a the theme of this event today, do you think most political figures respond to a message of love and its connection to helping our children, David? Uh, I think they do. Uh, I think humans do. I think in some ways in our society, we've moved away from the ability to talk about things like love, compassion, um, something other than sort of aggression and battle. Uh, and we need to talk about it more. Uh, we all benefit when we are more compassionate for the circumstances others are in. Uh, the whole concept of paying it forward is a concept that you know, more and more people are embracing. Uh, and we've had decades, most of my life, where money has been the uh, defining token of success. Uh, and I think what we're starting to see, maybe, is a pendulum back towards community being a pendulum of success, a, a moniker of success, that love and what we do for each other is actually who we are in our souls. One of the speakers uh, pointed out that there was a quote on a wall saying, you know, when you die, and um, my mom passed away at the beginning of this year, so it's, oh, it's sorry. quite close to me at the moment, uh, you don't take the money with you, you don't take the houses with you, uh, you don't take the, you know, anything as a possession with you. Um, what you have taken with you is the memories that those who you leave behind have. And those memories and those values are so much more than money. They are that love, they are that compassion. David Zuckerman is Lieutenant Governor in Vermont. I want to thank you for joining us on public broadcasting, thank Fios you. and other platforms that you see us on. All the best, we appreciate well, it. Thanks for the work you do, it's great to see you. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Investors Bank, the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Choose New Jersey, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, Community Food Bank of New Jersey, and by University Hospital, Newark, New Jersey. Promotional support provided by ROINJ. And by New Jersey Globe. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.